Huskers will kick off. Tennessee won the toss, and Philip Fulmer elected to receive. Cedric Wilson is back deep for the opening kick. He's a true freshman from Memphis, Tennessee. Ordinarily, they have Dwayne Goodrich back returning kickoffs. But as it was mentioned before the game from Ed Cunningham, he has an injury. A quad muscle pull. Chris Brown kicks off. The junior from South Lake, Texas, puts his foot to the ball. And the final game of this college football season is underway with a touchback. Sixty-year-old Tom Osborne in his final game as Nebraska coach. So many memories from the Orange Bowl. In recent years, they've been sweeter memories. Peyton Manning in his final game. He holds every passing record at the University of Tennessee. Huskers spread the field to start the game. And Manning checking on the first play from scrimmage. He throws on target, close to a first down. Marcus Nash. There is a flag on the play from the offensive backfield. Sean, I think we're going to have a holding penalty to start the game with. Terry McCauley is the referee. It's an Atlantic Coast Conference officiating crew. Spencer Riley, number 68, the left guard. He was the culprit. He was working against Jason Peter, number 55. Offensive line of Tennessee had difficulty early in the season, particularly in that loss at Florida. They were manhandled up front. They've been much better since, particularly when they put the true freshman, Posey Coleman, in the starting lineup at right tackle. And instead of a gain of eight, the ball back on the eight-yard line. First and 22, the quick hitter caught for a short game. Out across the 12 goes Peerless Price, tackled by Irwin Sweeney. The Tennessee backs and receivers, three wideouts to start the game. Jermaine Copeland, Peerless Price, and Marcus Nash, their leading receiver. Sean Bryson, an excellent pass-catching fullback. And Lewis is the tailback. And up front, from left to right, Clifton Riley, Teague, Hamilton, and Coleman. Teague, an all-conference center. The coaches say the strength of that line, the tackles, Clifton and Coleman. Jamal Lewis to the 14-yard line. The true freshman, leading freshman rusher in the nation this season, averaging 114 yards per game. Tripped up by Tony Ortiz. Great front four on defense for Nebraska. Grant Wistrom won the Lombardi Award. Jason Peters, an All-American. Wilson Rucker, the rest of the front. The linebackers are Jay Foreman between Tony Ortiz and Octavius McFarland. The leading tackler on the defense is the rover Mike Brown, Ralph Brown, the right corner, Erwin Sweeney, the true freshman at left corner, and Eric Warfield at free safety. Third down and 16. Shovel pass. Sean Bryson to the 20 and tackled by Jay Foreman. Ten yards short of the first down. The holding penalty really hurt. Well, you really have to wonder, Sean. Tennessee came out, had good protection on the first pass play of the game. The line did protect him. Then all of a sudden, the holding penalty really set him back. Here, they out of the shotgun formation, they run just a little shovel pass underneath. But the speed and the mobility of the Nebraska defense, that's going to be the tough thing on the Tennessee offense tonight, how to counter that speed. Tennessee had to use a timeout. You saw the punter, Chris Holt, signaling timeout. They did not have enough men on the field. Sean Bryson came on late. Chris Holt ready to punt now into that 14-mile-per-hour breeze. It should be excellent field position for Nebraska on its first possession. Oh, what a kick into the breeze. A boomer sends Bobby Newcomb back to the 20. That rolls inside the five, and it looks like it will stop near the two. What a kick by Hogue. By far the longest of his career, 78 yards. His previous long was 52, and that 78-yarder is just four yards shy of the Orange Bowl record. Sean, in big games, coaches talk.
talk to their teams before coming out about turnovers and field position. That kick by Chris Hogue was dramatic in terms of field position. He wasn't even the starting punter at the beginning of the year. He was the backup, but the freshman David Leverton had trouble. Scott Frost, hands off. Joel Magavica stopped with very little, perhaps a half yard. Radock Thompson led the surge for the Tennessee defense. The Nebraska quarterback is Scott Frost, the senior from Wood River, Nebraska. Started his career at Stanford after two seasons there. Transferred back to his home state university. And this year he became the 10th quarterback in Division 1A history to pass and rush for more than 1,000 yards in the same season. Chris McCoy of Navy also accomplished that feat this year. Frost keeps on the option. Out across the three, and that's all. Torrey Noel, the strong safety, up to make the play on the Nebraska quarterback. Nebraska backed up here in their own territory. Walks the best player on their team with the ball. That's Scott Frost on the option. But the speed of the Tennessee defense, the quickness and mobility of that defense played the play perfectly. On third and nine, Frost has a man open. It's too high. He was looking for the tight end, Sheldon Jackson. Jonathan Brown applied some pressure on Frost and forced a hasty throw. Well, one thing Nebraska does not like to do is throw when you expect them to throw. That's exactly what happened here. Scott Frost does not want to be in a throwing game tonight. They want to surprise you with the play-action pass. They hate it when they're behind the down and distance. Terry Fair has the same injury as Peyton Manning, a bursa sack injury. Back to receive the punt from Jesse Cush. And his first punt is a beauty, but he had the aid of the breeze. Fair bobbled it. Retreated all the way back to the 33. And he is stopped at the 37-yard line. A 56-yard punt by Cush, and the punters are the story here in the first four minutes. No score. Tennessee back on offense in a moment. Serving as offensive coordinator. He's working in that role at the moment on the Nebraska sideline. That's another one of the reasons he decided to get out of coaching. He felt because of his heart condition that he just didn't have the ability to work the kind of schedule that it takes to be the offensive coordinator and the head coach. Tennessee on offense for the second time. Whistle stopped the play. Sean, I think it's interesting to note that Tennessee tonight. Ball start on the offense. Five yards, still first down. Is playing for the first time without a lot of pressure on them. They're the underdog tonight, a heavy underdog to Nebraska. And sometimes that allows you to be looser. You play with more of a carefree spirit, if you will. And it'll be interesting to see as this game unfolds if Tennessee can take advantage of that underdog role. Well, one thing the Michigan win did do without question yesterday is eliminate Tennessee from national championship consideration. More than 11,000 yards passing in Manning's career. Only Todd Santos and Ty Detmer have thrown for more in college football. Bryson, as we mentioned, the fullback is an excellent receiver. He's back to the 35-yard line, tackled by Irwin Sweeney. Bryson, a junior from Franklin, North Carolina. And Sweeney's a true freshman who became a strider in the fourth game of the year when he took over for Jerome Peterson. Many analysts believe the one weakness of the Nebraska team is the secondary. Well, you know, they're young. They're, they're, it's not that they're not talented. They're very talented, but they're inexperienced. Freshman, sophomore, they have some younger type players in that secondary. Two sophomores and a true freshman, the starters. Quick pass. And it didn't go anywhere. Peerless Price wrapped up immediately by Octavius McFarland. 
A lot of people don't give the Nebraska defense credit for their speed. Th that ball was thrown to the outside. David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator of Tennessee, wants to make Nebraska defend the entire field. So he bunches receivers here, throws it outside, but watch the closing speed of the red shirts. That is why Nebraska is one of the better defenses in the country. They can run to the football. Third down and 12. Manning's four for four. But for only 13 yards. He's under pressure. A short pass. And Derek Edmonds, the reserve fullback, is thrown down immediately. Again, Irwin Sweeney in on the stop for Nebraska. So the penalties have really hurt Tennessee on its first two possessions, and the Volunteers will punt again five minutes in. Well, remember, we said at the beginning of the telecast the Tennessee offensive line has got to keep Peyton Manning clean. That's not a sack, but it's a little bump, and who knows with that knee of his, they've got to make sure they keep him clean all night long. Well, what can Chris Hogue do again? He can boom another one. High punt taken by Bobby Newcomb, the true freshman. He started at the 12. He's driven back at the 22-yard line. Ball came out but he was ruled down by contact. A 51-yard punt. And a 10-yard return for Newcomb. Chris Hogue, the man of the hour for the Volunteers, still no score. Moves in at fullback, number 40. He's blocking for Amon Green. Raynock Thompson made the tackle for Tennessee. Amon Green, second leading rusher in the nation this year. Behind Ricky Williams of Texas, Macavica got the start at fullback. Lance Brown, Jeff Lake, and Tim Carpenter, who is not a pass receiver at tight end. And an outstanding offensive line, Aaron Taylor was the winner of the Elton Trophy this year. Eric Anderson, the tackle, first team, all Big 12. Four 50-year seniors and the junior, Josh Heskew, at center. Second and nine. Frost. Shot down behind the line of scrimmage by Raynock Thompson. Back of the 21-yard line. So Thompson has been active early, the sophomore from New Orleans. Coaches say he's going to be a big-time player. Has great speed and does a great job diagnosing the play early. The defense up front, Jonathan Brown, their leader in sacks with 13 and a half. Duff Green and Terry, the rest of the front. Leonard Little, one of the best defensive players in the nation. First team All-SEC. Thompson and Wilson surround him. In the secondary, Griffin, Noel, Gaines, and Fair. Frost on third down. Hit as he threw. Open the tight end, Sheldon Jackson. He's short of a first down out of the 29. Corey Gaines made the tackle. And it will be another punt. Sean, right now, the speed, mobility, and quickness of the Tennessee defense is affecting the Nebraska offense. There's no question about it. They are matching up very well early in the game. And the more they can put pressure on Scott Frost right there, that's going to help him as the game goes along. Get, get Scott behind the down and distance. Make him a throwing quarterback. Take him out of what he does the best, and that's running. Fair waiting for the punt from Cush. Cush came to Nebraska as a walk-on. And that was not a very good punt. Down at the 37-yard line. A 36-yard punt by Cush. No score. Midway through the first quarter at the FedEx. Boring runs of 15 and 14 yards. Nebraska, a 24-17 victory to bring Tom Osborne his first national championship. Of course, they repeated at the Fiesta Bowl the following year. With an annihilation of Florida, some of the Tennessee players believe the reason they're such a big underdog in this game is that people are thinking about that SEC team, Florida, getting hammered two years ago by Nebraska. Another flag down. Manning trying to stretch the defense. Throws incomplete, looking for Marcus Nash. He was well covered by Ralph Brown, an outstanding cornerback. Consensus first team all Big 12 this season, but we check out the flag of the line. Sean, Sean the, tennis, the Tennessee team offensively wants to keep on the defense, lined up in the neutral zone, five yards, still first down. 
the Tennessee offense wants to keep the threat of a running game on Nebraska all night, but yet they've run seven offensive plays total, but only one run. Jamal Lewis, the great freshman tailback at Tennessee, has got to get into the game. He's got to become a factor. And the Tennessee offense improved dramatically this season once they did establish the ground game with the emergence of Lewis. Here is Lewis fighting for a couple out to the 43, tackled there by Jason Peter. Lewis rushed for 1,364 yards this season, and you have to remember he started only nine games. He was not the starting tailback at the beginning of the season. In the first three games of the season as a team, Tennessee rushed for 100 yards, just more than 99. Since then, you see what they've done, a dramatic improvement, more than 168 yards per game on the ground. Well, and it took Lewis a little time to learn pass protection, and in this offense, you have to protect Peyton Manning when you're running back. Second down, Lewis trying to get outside. He has a great combination of power and speed, and he's across midfield. Mike Rucker made the tackle. That's a gain of eight. This is, this is what I was referring to. Tennessee, if they become two-dimensional, if they can run and throw the ball, they can attack the Nebraska defensive team effectively. If they are one-dimensional, they're playing into the hands of what Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator of Nebraska, wants them to do. Lewis provided the first first down of this game for either team. Ball at the 49 of Nebraska. Manning with time as a receiver. First down at the 31-yard line. Andy McCullough tackled by Ralph Brown, the senior from Dayton. On the receiving end of that pass for Manning. And, Sean, you said it correctly. Manning with time. That is the key. Peyton Manning had plenty of time to get back, get planted, and put that ball on the target. That is what will affect this team as much as anything. Give your great player, Peyton Manning, time to throw. Derek Edmonds now in at fullback. Leading the way for Lewis. Good cut back to the inside, and Jason Peter helped drive him back. Jason Wiltz, the other defensive tackle, also at the bottom of the pile. When we chatted with David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee, earlier this week. He meant no disrespect toward this Nebraska defense, but he felt that Florida defense, as a group, was better, tougher. Well, there's, there's no question about it. The, ten the Tennessee, the Tennessee uh, coaches certainly have a lot of respect for this defense, but they're not awed by it. When they played Florida, they played one of the better defenses in the country, a fierce pass rush, really no different than Nebraska in the Tennessee coaches' minds. 5.20 remaining. In the first quarter, no score. The fade incomplete. He was looking for David Martin, a true freshman. And the Tennessee coaches think will be a star, but he hasn't played much this year. He's a surprising target in this game, having appeared in just four games during the regular season with just one reception. Well, and Tennessee was trying to get a mismatch here physically. Irwin Sweeney for Nebraska is only 6'1". Martin is 6'5 for Tennessee. They liked the matchup they got there. The ball was about six inches off target. Now third down and seven. Neither team has converted on third down tonight. Manning again with plenty of time, and that's caught for a first down. Sean Bryson, tackled by Irwin Sweeney. Tennessee at the Nebraska 20, first and 10. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator at Nebraska, has got to be concerned, not because Peyton Manning is completing some passes. He's a great player. He's going to hit some open receivers, but because Peyton Manning is getting time to throw. Wistrom, the great player, is working against Chad Clifton, 67. Clifton won that particular war. The pitch to Lewis. Bryson leading the way. Lewis hit hard and fumbled. And Nebraska has recovered. Ralph Brown knocked it out, and Mike Rucker recovered the fumble at the 21-yard line. What a hit by Brown. Then Rucker pounced on the football. I said earlier that you're always concerned
concerned about field position and turnovers. That's what you preach to your team in the locker room before the opening kickoff. Jamal Lewis, a young player, just didn't have the ball put away quite tight enough. And consequently, Ralph Brown gets off the block, makes a great tackle. The ball's loose. Nebraska recovers. Tennessee showing blitz. They're up near the line. Amon Green out across the 25 to the 26. Well, Philip Fulmer said earlier this week his team cannot afford to make many mistakes against this talented Nebraska bunch, and he watched the first major miscue of the night. Well, I'm sure Philip felt that they had points on the board there. They were certainly in field goal range as a minimum and probably touchdown range. Second and six, no score. Four ten remaining in the first quarter. Now one back look from Nebraska. And Green was hit immediately from behind. Excellent penetration by the volunteers. Buck Buxton. He's been a backup defensive tackle much of this season. Forced into action with the season-ending injury to Billy Ratliff, who went out for the year with a knee injury suffered against Southern Miss. What the Tennessee defense is doing right now is they're penetrating upfield. Whenever you penetrate against an option team or a counter team, which Nebraska runs a lot of counter plays, it's disruptive to the offense. That is what they're doing effectively. Play action fake to Green. Frost throws. Man open. Punt. First down, Nebraska. Sheldon Jackson across midfield with the first first down of the night for the Huskers. A gain of 25. Sheldon Jackson is the best receiving tight end at Nebraska. He's going to come from this side of the screen, drag across the field. It's a nice counter pass by Nebraska. All of the Tennessee defense flowed one direction. Frost comes away from that flow, finds Sheldon Jackson. Great hand placement and concentration by the big tight end. Joel Makovica back on the field for Nebraska. He got the carry and got two to the 46 of Tennessee where he ran into Raynock Thompson. It's going to be critical to see if McAvick can stay in this game. He's such a wonderful blocker as well as an outstanding runner. Your fullback's got to lead that tailback all night long. And boy, when you lose a guy like that out of your lineup, it affects your running game. Talking with Joel a couple of days ago, he said lately teams have been keying on him, taking away those inside runs. And as a result, his stats haven't been as impressive lately. Whistles before the play. No play. Boy, and Tennessee is lucky there were whistles. Nebraska came in an unbalanced line and ran an option to the short side of the field. Tennessee wasn't lined up properly. That play might have gone. I'll start on the offense. Five yards, complete second down. That play very well might have gone for a Nebraska touchdown. There's only two men over here on this side. Everybody else is over here. Tennessee had to adjust, didn't get quite lined up, and the pitch is wide open with a lead blocker. No one else in the defense out here for Tennessee. Tom Osborne gives the opponent just about every formation, just about every play out of every formation. It's amazing to watch them practice. And Here's Frost throwing on target again. Matt Davison, the true freshman from Tecumseh, Nebraska. Perhaps best known for his diving catch at the end of regulation against Missouri for a touchdown that forced overtime in that game against the Tigers, a game the Huskers went on to win in OT. Well, Tom Osborne's been in a lot of big games, and he knows when you're playing against a fired-up defensive team that's really penetrating and flying to the ball, counter them. Play action pass and counter plays, and that's exactly what that was, a play action counter pass that was effective. Nebraska starting to get in rhythm after the fumble by Lewis. Frost throws looking deep and is caught by Newcomb and bodies out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Tackled by Torrey Noel. 21 yards on the throw by Frost to Newcomb. This is what makes defending the Nebraska offense so difficult. It's the most effective and difficult offense in the country to stop. It's a play-action pass. They make it look like option. Then Frost jumps back. Newcomb runs it inside. 
post corner route. He runs to the post and then back outside. The ball is thrown where either he catches it or no one catches it. The option he had to pitch it. It's Shevin Wiggins inside the five and down near the goal line. Gerald Griffin made the tackle to save the touchdown. Wiggins, a wingback, taking the pitch. And he has Nebraska inside the two, first and goal. This is a three-back play where it's the famous option play for Nebraska. Scott Frost takes the hit, but dishes the ball off just beautifully. Scott Frost, half the time, when you watch him play on the option, he doesn't even look where he's pitching the ball. He just flicks it out there, knows his wingman is with him. I'm on green, short of the goal line. He was stopped by Leonard Little. It will be second and goal with a minute and a half remaining in the first quarter. And there was a flag on the play. So it remains first and goal. Amon Green here on the power play. Fights for heavy yardage and then all of a sudden fumbles it. Seeks, tries to sneak it across, but the officials saw it. No touchdown. John, it's amazing. Just a few seconds ago, Tennessee's defense was in control of the Nebraska offense. But that is what makes it so difficult to defense Tom Osborne's attack. All of a sudden, they have so many weapons, so many formations, and your defense just can't keep track of all of it. Many of the coaches who talked about Tom Osborne since he announced his retirement talk about his great skill as a game coach. There's many adjustments. Up and over and in for a touchdown. Amon Green makes it 6 0 Nebraska. Watch the fullback, Billy Legate, number 40. He, he takes the place of Makavica. He's the lead blocker on the play. He's the one that isolated on the linebacker. Right there, number 40. He knocked Leonard Little out of the hole which enabled Amon Green to score the touchdown. Chris Brown out of the hold of Ted Retzlaff. And it is 7-0 Nebraska. Now this Orange Bowl memory. This FedEx Orange Bowl memory is sponsored by Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm. The power to comfort. The power to help you quit. The 1984 Orange Bowl matched number one Nebraska, number four Miami. Nebraska trailed by seven with less than a minute to play. On fourth and eight, Jeff Smith scored from 24 yards out. Nebraska went for two in the win, but Turner Gill's pass was knocked out of Jeff Smith's hands. Miami won the national championship for the 31-30 victory over Nebraska. Ten left in the first quarter. Our overhead shots are from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes. Goodyear's Blimp Fleet will double this year with three new blimps arriving in international markets. After the fumble by Jamal Lewis at the 22 of Nebraska, the Cornhuskers went 78 yards. It took eight plays. And Frost was three for three on the drive with Tennessee concentrating on stopping the run. He hurt them with the pass. Chris Brown. Bounces it down the field. Nice hop for Cedric Wilson, the true freshman. He's in trouble. And stopped short of the... 20-yard line, knocked down to the 17. Clint Finley in on the stop. Mike Brown also in on the tackle for Nebraska. Click on to CBS Sports Line, where you'll find a wrap-up of tonight's game and news on all the college bowl action. Get the latest scores, stats, highlights, exclusive columns, and the latest breaking news in all of sports. Plus, check out the most in-depth Olympic site on the web. Get in on the action at cbs.sportsline.com. Again, confusion in the Tennessee huddle. The player running on late. They'll have to hurry to get this play off. Play clock at three. Mark Levine now the tailback. He's out to the 21. Tackled by Tony Ortiz. Levine was the starting tailback at the beginning of the year before Lewis won the job. You know, you go back, Mark Levine is now in the game for Jamal Lewis. Jamal, Jamal Lewis right here with the ball. He has it in the wrong arm. 
He should have the ball outside, in the outside arm, away from all those defenders. I'm not sure that that necessarily is what caused the fumble, but you always fundamentally put that ball away from the defense. Antron Peebles, one of three tight ends used regularly by Tennessee, being helped off. The junior from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Started his career at linebacker. Also a defensive end, then moved to tight end in spring practice. Tight end's not a big part of the passing attack. As a matter of fact, UT tight ends have just three catches this year. Mark Levine, the running back, fell Ooh. into his right knee. It was a good block by Peoples, but all of a sudden he got hit from the behind there. Levine again, big hole. Mark Levine breaks free. Good move on Warfield, and he's tackled out at the 48-yard line by Carlos Polk, a backup linebacker. Gain of 27 for Levine. And Polk is slow to get up for Nebraska. Ne Nebraska wants to make sure they eliminate the running game. Tennessee has established early in this game that they are capable of finding some creases in that Nebraska front. So far, Levine found him. So did Jamal Lewis. It's encouraging if you're a Tennessee fan. Jamal Lewis trotting along the Tennessee sideline. Might have been injured on that hit that caused the fumble. Play action fake. A good one by Manning. He throws in a coverage, and it's almost intercepted by Mike Brown. He was looking for Marcus Nash. And it was nearly picked off by the sophomore from Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, Mike Brown is the rover back for Nebraska. He read Peyton Manning's eyes. Peyton Manning was looking where he was throwing. Brown made a great break on the ball, very close to an interception that could have gone the distance had he been able to hang on to it. Brown was an outstanding two-way player in high school in Arizona. The Arizona High School Player of the Year as a senior. He won the award as the best running back in the state and also the best defensive back. Manning. That pass deflected and intercepted by Eric Warfield. Warfield at the 30 and tackled from behind at the 25-yard line by Sean Bryson. Manning has seen this before. His receivers had a tough time hanging on in the SEC championship game against Auburn, and as a result, the Volunteers just did squeak out a victory. Well, you have to wonder, Jermaine Copeland, number six, the wide receiver, he is dragging across the formation, but Peyton Manning throws a hot ball here. This ball is an underneath route, and it needs to be a little bit lower and a little softer. It's a little bit hot. I don't say that Jermaine Copeland shouldn't have caught it, but it wasn't an easy catch. Third interception of the season for Warfield, the only senior starter in the secondary for Nebraska. He hails from Texarkana, Arkansas. The end of the first quarter, the score Nebraska 7, Tennessee nothing. We'll return to the FedEx Orange Bowl after this message and a word from your local station. Interception that Peyton Manning just threw. Jermaine Copeland, number six. He comes across the formation on a little drag route. The ball certainly should have been caught. I would say, though, I've seen it on practice fields for 29 years. The ball, when it's a little bit high or a little bit hot, wide receivers have oftentimes tipped it up in the air as they did right there. Carlos Polk, who was injured a couple of plays ago, has his shoulder pads off and is heading to the locker room for Nebraska. He's a backup linebacker. Frost on first down. Keeps and gets drilled right in the line of scrimmage. What a first half Raynock Thompson is having. Let's get more on the condition of Carlos Polk from Michelle Tafoya. Well, Sean, they took him to the sidelines, as you saw, and he was laying flat the entire time. They think he may have broken his right collarbone, so they're taking him back for x-rays, and we'll have more after that. Back to you. Second and 10. 7 nothing Nebraska. They capitalized on the first turnover by Tennessee. A fumble on 78 yards for a score. Now at the interception, they're the 26. Newcomb in trouble behind the line, and thrown for a loss by Jonathan Brown.
shot. Antron Peebles heading to the dressing room for Tennessee with his right shoe off. Jonathan Brown, the left defensive end for Tennessee, plays the reverse play perfectly. It's a little counter play to number 12, Bobby Newcomb, the fastest player at Nebraska. But Jonathan Brown did exactly what his coaches told him to do, play the reverse. Quarterback draw, Frost. Trying to get outside. Two flags thrown at the feet of offensive linemen. Raynock Thompson and Terry Fair made the tackle. And it's against Nebraska. Play would be short of a first down, and it would be fourth down at the 22. Certainly a makeable field goal distance for Chris Brown, one of the best kickers in the country. Tennessee will have to take the penalty, back him up, and mm -hmm. give him another down, but certainly put him out of a field goal range, or at least in more difficult range. Sling, on the offense, 10 yards, spot of the foul, repeat third down. Let's get more on the Tennessee injury situation from Ed Cunningham. Hey, Sean, the running back Jamal Lewis has a slight sprain in his left ankle. He's going to be able to go back in the game, hopefully run it out. Looks a little bit gimpy on the sidelines. The news is not so good for tight end Antron Peebles. They've taken him in for x-rays. Right now, it's a severely sprained right ankle. He will not return unless something, a miracle happens before now and the next time they go on offense. Nebraska back at the 39-yard line. Cross setting up a screen to Green. Leonard Little pulls him down from behind. Saw the great speed of Little, who played most of his career, lined up outside as a pass rusher. This year, he's made the transition to middle linebacker. And no matter where you put him, he's a terrific player. Now Leonard Little playing in the middle here, runs underneath the block. He's man-to-man -man on the tailback. They tried to block him. He ran underneath the block. He used that athleticism of his to track down Amon Green on the screen. Couldn't be played any better by a guy playing man-to-man -man coverage. Jesse Cush, the son of a former Husker. His father, Bill, was a defensive back on their 70 and 71 national championship teams. Jesse hangs it up high. Oh, another fumble! And a touchdown for Nebraska. Lance Brown ran it in, but it was a muff punt, so the ball will come back to the 15-yard line. But it's another key mistake by Tennessee. It'll be first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Terry Fair could not handle the punt. Sean, right before he dropped this punt, I was about to say what a terrific stop by the Tennessee defense. What a job they did on defense. But the muff punt obviously brings them back into a very difficult position, but they're going to have to rally here. they got to go right back in and say, hey, guys, whatever we do, we can't give up a touchdown. Tighten it down, and let's play defense and just suck it up and go. You wonder if Homer will continue with Fair as the punt returner. He's had a tough time hanging on lately. Makavica breaks tackles. He's inside the 10. Down to the 8-yard line. It'll be second down. Jonathan Brown and Gerald Griffin made the tackle. Tennessee... Fortunate now to just be down seven to nothing with three turnovers, but it could be 14 shortly. Well, you make a good point about Terry Fair. He had a couple fumbles on punt returns in the SEC championship game, and tonight the win's a factor. There's no question. When that ball gets up there, it's difficult to catch and hard to handle. I think you'll see punt catchers on both sides have some difficulty. Problems with personnel and a flag thrown against Nebraska. Nagavica was trying to run off. They had too many men on the field. Huskers were trying to get a timeout, but instead they're flagged for the illegal substitution. Confusion. He wanted the timeout, but the flag had been thrown. The ball's back at the 13, where it'll be second down and eight. Magavica still out of the game. The fullback is Billy Legate. Frost pitches to Green. Green dragged down at the 10-yard line by Tory Noel. They've done a good job bottling up Green, who's rushed for at least 100 yards in each of the last 11 games. The only game this season in which he failed to reach 100 was the opener against Akron 
And he had 99 in that one. Well, so far, that Tennessee defense is utilizing what they have the most of, and that's that speed and athleticism. They're able to run laterally down with that option play and chase it down. Green second in the nation in rushing this year behind Ricky Williams. Cross pitches. Here's Shevin Wiggins again inside the 10. Touchdown! is the option play that Nebraska ran at the other end of the field that came up just short of the touchdown. Frost comes, fakes to the fullback, comes outside, and now all of a sudden finds Shevin Wiggins, his wingman, pitches the ball. Tennessee doesn't have enough support in the secondary. He goes into the end zone clean. Chris Brown, still perfect this year in PAT, 64 for 64. Wiggins the touchdown. Philip Fulmer knows his team cannot keep turning the ball over. Terry Fair gave Nebraska outstanding field position. It led to the second score of the night for the Huskers. Sean McDonough and Terry Donahue. They were able to overcome the turnover problems against Auburn in the SEC championship game where the balls, but they're playing a tougher team. Well, it's going to be much more difficult for Tennessee to overcome those mistakes tonight. Already three turnovers and 14 points off two of the turnovers. And if they continue to do that, it's going to be a long night for Tennessee. Chris Brown to kick off again. He bounces it. The short kick taken by Brian Darden, a backup running back. And quality field position for the Volunteers as Darden brought it out to the 38-yard line. Tomorrow. 14-0 Nebraska. Horn Huskers hoping for a convincing victory to sway voters. Perhaps earned at least a share of the national championship. Voters have been flip-flopping all year. Jamal Lewis back in the game. Two hands around the ball as he dove to the 43-yard line where he was chopped down by Mike Brown. You know, it's funny about turnovers. When we, we talk about turnovers, Tennessee, nine turnovers in the last six quarters. Sometimes they just come. You, you coach the same. You emphasize the same fundamentals. You talk to your players about them, but sometimes they just occur. In this particular turnover, the ball needed to be in the outside arm for sure. Maybe it could have been avoided. On second and five, Manning. Flag thrown as Marcus Nash has a first down at the play stands. Erwin Sweeney made the tackle at the 47 of Nebraska. The flag thrown in the secondary. There's a penalty flag on the play. Holding against Nebraska. That will likely be refused. The result of the play, a 10-yard gain and a first down. There's Grant Wistrom, including a brilliant career at Nebraska. For the second year in a row, he's a first-team All-American in football. He's also a first-team academic All-American. First down. For the second straight year, the only other Nebraska player to have that Double double. Dave Remington. Grant Wistrom is a pre pharmacy major, very difficult major. He carries a 3.43 grade point average. Well, he was a Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year in 96 and 97. Manning, take the draw, throws. Nice catch. His receiver helped him there. Jermaine Copeland, who had the costly deflection that led to the interception earlier. Made a nice sliding catch at the 34-yard line. 13 more for the balls and a first down. Well, Copeland is in the inside slot position. He's just going to run down the field. If you're a Tennessee fan, the thing that you have to be encouraged about is there are some holes in this Nebraska defense, both throwing and running. What you're discouraged about is you got to hang on to the football if you're going to take advantage of those holes. Jamal Lewis, the lone back. Marcus Nash, the motion man, lobbed out to Lewis. And he's bounced out of bounds after a short gain. Tony Ortiz put the hit on Lewis. Ortiz from Waterbury, Connecticut. 
Nebraska has players in the program from 26 different states. He's a state champion in track while well, he was at Crosby High School in Waterbury, won the 100 meters in Connecticut, the 110 meter hurdles. And Nebraska has a lot of former track athletes on this team. In the early 1990s, Tom Osborne changed his philosophy and went to recruiting more speed, and they have plenty of speed on this squad. Lewis down to the 30 yard line. Grant Wistrom and Jay Foreman combined on the stop. Foreman, the son of the former great Minnesota Viking, Chuck Foreman. He switched numbers this year to wear the number worn by his dad. Grant Wistrom here, just on a little stunt to the inside, played it very well. He has a school record, 58 and a half tackles for losses throughout his career at Nebraska. Big third down, six yards to go for a volunteer first down. Tennessee trails 14 to nothing. Manning throws short of a first down. We'll see where the forward progress is spotted. Mike Brown put the hit on Jermaine Copeland. Looks like the ball will be just inside the 27, meaning they're about two full yards short of the first down, so Philip Fulmer sends on the field goal unit. Peyton Manning had to get rid of that ball a little quicker than he wanted to. There was pressure from Nebraska. He had to unload it. I know he's frustrated about that because he knows how critical that first down was. Jeff Hall, the junior from Winchester, Tennessee, will try a 44-yard field goal. Benson Scott is the holder. That is right down the middle, and Tennessee is on the board with 8.28 remaining in the first half. Jeff Hall, Tennessee's fourth all-time leading scorer, gives the ball there. Tennessee on the board. It's 14 to three. Here's Ed Cunningham. Sean Peyton Manning came to the sidelines, was not real happy that they didn't go for it on fourth, but then he immediately came over to the offense and he said, guys, even though we didn't go for it on fourth, it's our job to get first downs. Don't put it on the coaches to make that decision. Peyton looks sharp tonight, Ed. 11 of 14 for 70 yards, and he had the one ball deflect off the hands of Copeland that could have been caught. Shevin Wiggins waiting for the kickoff. And Sean Peyton Manning, responsible for 75% of the Tennessee offensive production this year, certainly is on target tonight. Jeff Hall to kick off. Merrill Griffin had to hold the ball. Shevin Wiggins has a seam. Spins out across the 30 and goes down at the 34-yard line. Nice return by the junior from Paul Meadow, Florida, back in his home state. He's out of Manatee High School, the same school that sent Tommy Frazier to Nebraska. Turnovers, the story early. Tennessee has turned it over three times. Nebraska capitalized on two of them for 14 points. Well, and the other statistic right here, if you look at rush yards, Tennessee 49, Nebraska only 35. From the 34, Frost hands it off. Green. Tackled by Raynott Thompson. He managed to break through the tackle for an extra couple of yards. Out to the 41-yard line. Thompson limping a bit after making the tackle. He had a bruised kidney earlier in the season that caused him to miss their big win at UCLA out in Los Angeles. Sean, Joel McAvick at number 45, the fullback. When he's in the game, Nebraska's a different offensive team than when he's on the sideline. He's in the game now, blocking for Green, who squirts across the 45 with a first down for the Cornhuskers. And Corey Gaines made the tackle. 7.40 left in the first half. Nebraska leads by 11. Come on, Tennessee. All right, Tennessee, let's go. Come on, Tennessee. Okay. It's about time for a little play action pass by Dr. Tom Osborne. This is where he likes to pound you, pound you, and all of a sudden make something look like a run and go up top on you. The option, Frost keeps. Gain of three to the 49. Darwin Walker at the bottom of the pile for Tennessee. The 
Tennessee tonight on defense is going to try to read the path of the fullback to determine whether it's option or power football. That particular time, Makovica showed him a clear-cut path to the option. As a result, the linebackers were able to flow and get into that play. Frost has two wide receivers to the right. He keeps and gets across midfield. Run down again by Darwin Walker. Backup tackle. Corey Gaines also in on the play. Boy, Sean, Darwin Walker made a great defensive football play from the inside position. He kept his pads perfect. He went down the line of scrimmage, and he ran like a linebacker to that play. It was impressive. He's a big, strong man, strongest man of the team. Benched 515 pounds in the spring. Well, you could do that, couldn't you? You or me, we could get that the 15 up. part, anyway. Big third down and five. Frost. And spinning into difficulty and then escaped. Now he throws for a first down. Sheldon Jackson. Down to the 34-yard line. 14 yards on the game. Al Wilson made the stop. It was Darwin Walker who put the pressure on Frost, and if you let him escape, you're going to pay the price. Well, I mentioned that play-action passing. That's exactly what this was. Coach Osborne came back with a play-action pass. Darwin Walker with tremendous pressure, but great players make big plays, and that's what Scott Frost did. He got off the hook and found an open receiver for the first down. Just inside the 35. Frost down the middle. Newcomb dropped the ball. Had he caught it, it in all likelihood would have been six points. He was behind Torrey Noel, and the pass hit him in stride. But Newcomb could not squeeze it. Bobby Newcomb came off a fake of the option and ran right down the field working on Noel. The ball is just maybe an inch or two long, but certainly should have been caught, or if Bobby Newcomb did anything, maybe lay out for that ball, give himself those extra inches to come up with that reception. Second and 10. Frost, Keats, and he's run down from behind. Jared Hayden, the backup linebacker, showing his speed. Frost can run, and Hayden gain ground coming from behind well the Tennessee defense all 11 players on the field can run Hayden is the right side linebacker he comes underneath the block number 48 and then races lays it out to get Scott Frost by the ankles another third down and 10 Tennessee has the speed defensively to counter this offense Frost throwing on the run and it is incomplete it's short hopped Kenny Cheatham with Gerald Griffin in coverage. So now a decision for Tom Osborne. It would be a long field goal, better than 50 yards, into the wind. And as a result, he'll put the punting unit on. Jesse Cush. And it is Terry Fair back deep for Philip Fulmer. So despite his problems catching punts tonight and in the SEC championship game, he's back there. Might not have to worry about that one. It's a little long. Landed in the middle of the end zone, a touchback. 36-yard punt with a net of just 16. Tennessee gets the ball back down by 11. Yeah. Finally, television's most important new drama, Brooklyn South, returns with an episode you cannot miss all Monday night right here on CBS. Tonight, it's the FedEx Orange Bowl on CBS. Final game for Peyton Manning. As quarterback of the University of Tennessee, Lewis up the middle. That's five. Steve Warren, a backup defensive tackle with help from Jay Foreman on the stop for Nebraska. Well, Tennessee, when you get five yards on first and ten against the Nebraska defense, it means your offensive line is starting to control the line of scrimmage. And it's not an easy defense to control. They have great pass rushers, a lot of mobility and athleticism, but Tennessee can move the ball. They're moving against the fifth best defense in the nation in total defense. Manning in the flat, and it's incomplete. Low ball looking for Andy McCullough. I think the other good news for Tennessee 
you'd never know Peyton Manning had a bad knee. The way he has thrown the ball tonight, the way he's been taking his drops. Here's what we were talking about. About the Nebraska defense, the black shirts, fifth in total defense, third against the run, twelfth in scoring. I think when you compare them to Michigan, most would say Michigan has the better defense, but many would make the argument Nebraska has a much better offense. Nebraska averaged 47 points per game. Michigan never scored more than 38 in a single game. Manning under pressure, has a man in the flat and went through the hands of Lewis. A little bit high. Warren was putting the heat on Manning. And this time it is three downs and a punt for the Volunteers. Well, Steve Warren, the nose guard, came up the middle of the Tennessee offensive line this time, working against Trey Teague, number 70. It's one of the first times tonight that Manning hasn't been able to set his feet and throw properly. Chris Hogue having a career night. Running with the wind this time. He's picked two beauties against the wind, and here's another cannon shot. Newcomb back to the 20. And he stopped at the 31-yard line. A 55-yard punt by Hogue and an 11-yard return. Chris Hogue, the senior from Memphis, an early star for the ball. Great poll. The fans chose college football's all-time greatest team, and the results were overwhelming. The 1995 Nebraska team, which dismantled Florida in the Fiesta Bowl, received 40% of the votes. Among 16 choices, Amon Green slipped down as he tried to cut up field. Al Wilson was coming quickly for Tennessee. And Green's down with a loss of two back to the 29. Well, Al Wilson playing the inside linebacker position, he forced the sweep like you want your linebacker to force it. He ran right downhill at it, and Amon Green just flat ducked to keep from getting deheaded by him. Remember what we told you about Nebraska. Not only leading the nation in rushing this season, but they average 60 yards per game more than any other team in the nation in rushing. I mean, a tough time tonight against this very quick Tennessee defense. Frost on the run. The receiver upended. Newcomb draws the flag. He collided with Torrey Noel. And the officials threw the flag of the 45-yard line. Well, it's a good call by the official. One thing you can't one thing you can't do when you play pass defense is put your hands on someone. Torrey Noel working against Bobby Newcomb right in the slot. When Newcomb breaks outside, Noel takes him by the shirt and tried to hold him. Mm -hmm. Scott Frost saw it. He, wanted, he, he saw it. Once he saw the flag, he was okay. Phillip didn't see it. I think maybe Full, Phil Fulmer has an argument that it could have been defensive holding. Frost, I think, still had the ball when the contact was made. Newcomb took a couple steps and then fell down. From the five-yard penalty, instead of the walk-off out to the spot of the 44. Green up the middle, now a flag thrown where you would expect offensive holding. Guarantee this is going back another 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Holding is the call. Interesting, the results of the all-time greats poll. The 95 Nebraska team. We asked Tom Osborne some of the highlights of his career, memorable games or seasons. He said 78 when he beat Oklahoma for the first time. That was the knock on him early in his career. He couldn't win the big one. He finally beat Oklahoma. He mentioned other teams along the way. But the 95 team, he said, the 95 team I enjoyed on the field. Right. And he said it was probably his best team. But he did make the distinction on the field. Those off the field problems were a distraction, and obviously they still weigh. He clearly made that distinction in the conversation with him. And you do as a coach. It affects you. Shovel pass to Green. Green trying to turn the corner. He does. I'm on Green back into Tennessee territory. First down and much more. All the way to the 36 of the ball. Darwin Walker and Raynock Thompson brought down Green after a gain of 29. This is a little shovel pass that Nebraska runs. It's almost like an inverted option play. Instead of the back being on the upfield of the quarterback, it's underneath. And 
The quarterback, Frost, just shovels it to Amon Green. He gets a great block by Bobby Newcomb, number 12, the wide receiver. And Amon Green is a very powerful back, and he'll punish you rather than run out of bounds. He'll run right through you. How about Darwin Walker downfield again to catch up with Green? Sean, one thing about Amon Green, he averages 172 yards when he's playing against ranked teams, when he generally averages about 156 yards a game. So the guy gets up for big, important games. Reynock Thompson left earlier in the game with a sprained ankle and returned, but looks a bit more serious this time around. And he has been a major factor on defense to this point for Tennessee. First and ten. Nebraska at the Tennessee 36. Green cuts back. Green delivering a ball, and he got knocked down by Leonard Little. Terry Fair had the first hit low. And Green just smiled at Little, was barking a bit in the face of Amon after the hit. Watch the out, watch the out, Outland Trophy winner. Well, there's some hitting going on down there, Sean. And number 67, Aaron Taylor, the Outland Trophy winner, the left guard, made a great block to open up that cutback lane for Green. Second and short, two yards to go for Nebraska first down. Green to the 26, it will be close. Bill Duff and Anthony Hampton combining on the stop. Hampton wears number 85. He came in to replace Thompson, who left two plays ago. Sean, if you're playing defense right now at Tennessee, you've got to be talking about, listen, fellas, let's make sure we only give up a field goal here. Let's not go in there 21-3 at halftime. If we go in at 17-3, we're two touchdowns down with Peyton Manning, some of our receivers, we can get right back into this game. Timeout for a measurement. It is a first down. Our overhead shots are courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes. It was 1960 when the Goodyear Blimps first began live sports coverage right here in South Florida at the Orange Bowl. Back in those days, the game was played at the Orange Bowl Stadium. Moved a little bit north. This beautiful new facility, Pro Player Stadium. Jay Sims now in as the eye back for the Huskers. Frost pitches to Sims, and he's out of bounds. Perhaps a gain of one for the oldest player in the game tonight. Jay Sims, 26 years old. He spent a couple of years working after high school before he came to the University of Nebraska as a walk-on. He's now on scholarship, graduated in December with a degree in communications. Sean, in the second quarter here, the Nebraska offensive line is beginning to assert itself. It's starting to come off the ball better than they did earlier in the game. They have better field position, playing with more confidence. Sim still the eye back, the give to Makovica. Short game, Al Wilson wrapped him up. Makovica, Green, and Frost, the starting backfield, have combined this season for 3,657 yards rushing and 50 touchdowns. Well, and when you run behind this big offensive line, number 67, the left guard right there, Aaron Taylor, he just took the nose guard, knocked him five yards off the ball with the center, and they create a little void in that defense. But Tennessee's quick enough to fill it up with some of the defender. And it's still Sims, the eye back. They hand it off to Wiggins, and he is close to a first down. Seven Wiggins had just one rush all season prior to tonight. He's handled it on a couple of occasions tonight, including the 10-yard run for the second Nebraska touchdown. I think Nebraska will go for this. They run 68 running plays per game on average. Timeout back to the Orange Bowl in a moment. But the guaranteed field goal for Brown is made 16 in a row, but the first down is almost an automatic, as Terry suggests. They're in the prowess on the ground by Nebraska, and was Frost on the keeper. First and 10 at the 14-yard line, and the time is becoming a factor, 55 seconds left. 
Look at the push by this big offensive line. They just move the line of scrimmage. They'll get their pads underneath. Frost easily makes the first down behind Aaron Taylor, the left guard. Now this formation, all the backs lined up in the eye. This is a stack eye. And it's Frost. He ran into trouble and put it on the ground. And it is still free. And Tennessee has recovered. First turnover of the night by Nebraska, and a big one. Jonathan Brown came up with the ball after Terry Fair and Anthony Hampton combined to level Scott Frost and knocked the ball loose. Well, Scott Frost on the option just gets stripped. It's just a great play by Terry Fay. A turnover goes in favor of Coach Fulmer. He's more popular. Annually the best halftime show. All the bowl games. Lewis up through a big hole. Look at him power his way across the 40. And now Tennessee will use the timeout. A running play to see if they could get something to get some breathing room and then perhaps take a chance, and that's what they'll do now. One timeout left for the Volunteers, 26 seconds left in the half. They're out at the 42. When you're backed up like Tennessee was, whatever you do, you don't want to turn the ball over. It's a great lead back, block by the fullback, Sean Bryson, and Jamal Lewis showing why he is such a strong runner as a freshman tailback. This guy has powerful legs. He drags Nebraska tacklers with him, and he hasn't had a bad first half except for that one fumble that occurred to him early in the game. If he can get on track, it'll open up Tennessee's game in the second half. He was compared with Jamal Lewis coming out of high school to Herschel Walker, both from Georgia. Jamal's from Atlanta. I think this Bill season, Lewis, uh, the second highest freshman rushing total in the history of the Southeastern Conference. Only Herschel Walker rushed for more yards in his freshman season in the SEC. I think Tennessee may take a shot down the field with 26 seconds left in the half here. Why not? Now that they're at the 42. Manning hit as he throws. That might be a compelling argument. Why not? Grant Wistrom finally got to Peyton Manning. No problems with the knee as Manning gets back up with 23 seconds left in the half, second and 10. Well, and it's surprising because Tennessee's line has done a reasonable job tonight giving Peyton Manning plenty of time, but on this particular play, Grant Wistrom coming on an inside stunt puts tremendous pressure on Peyton, and like you say, you'll worry about that knee as the game goes on. Three straight incompletions thrown by Manning. Second and 10. Peter got through, but the pass is caught by Marcus Nash. Nash hit hard, but he held on at the 40. And Tennessee looking to the sideline to see if the last timeout will be used. Tony Ortiz made that hard hit on Nash. They have one timeout left. And I don't think Peyton wanted it called. I, I, but it was. You can see him hollering at his teammates. Yeah, you really needed to save that timeout for your field goal team, Sean. Peyton Manning easily could have gotten up down the ball. He had more downs than time left. He had four downs because it was a first down. He could have used the down, saved the timeout for the field goal team. Peyton Manning under real pressure there by Jason now, Peter, number 55. He drove Manning a long way back. After that ball had been thrown to get him on the ground, Scott Frost told us last season he had the bursa sack injury to the knee. It got puffy just as Manning's did. Frost had his drain 19 times. He said in games it didn't bother him until he was hit and that knee got driven down into the ground and all of a sudden it would puff back up. I wonder if Scott has said that to his uh, defensive teammates. He <laughs> made sure. a real effort to drive Peyton down to the ground that time. But you know the Nebraska players talked freely about wanting Peyton Manning to play in this game. They felt like their only chance for a national championship was to beat Tennessee with Peyton Manning, not without him. 15 seconds left and no timeouts. When they go over the middle, they'd have to get up very quickly to spike. Get out of bounds. Oh, he stayed in bounds and lunges for a first down. The one break for Tennessee could be 
that it's close to a first down. They should at least stop the clock for a measurement here. The officials conferring and the half ends. I think that's a very bad piece of officiating there. They otherwise had a good half, but that was right at the 30-yard line. And very close to a first down. But well, it took the referee, Terry McCauley, a long time to get in position to see. He tried to stop the clock just as the half end, waving his arms over his head. Well, the key is Jermaine Copeland, Sean, has to get the ball mm -hmm. out of bounds. The, the yardage is nowhere near is as important as the time. Get the ball out of bounds so your coaches and players can have one more shot at a field goal or at the touchdown. No question about that. Let's go to Michelle Tafoya. All right. I'm 14 to 3, and as far as the quarterbacks go in the first half, Peyton Manning, 13 of 19, 96 yards. He was picked off once. Scott Frost was 7 of 10. He's thrown for more yards, uh, Lou. He's thrown for 109 in the first half. Tell me about the first half performance by the quarterbacks. Well, with Scott Frost, he's running play action passes coming off the running game. The running game isn't working as well, but he's doing the things he's done all year. He's given good leadership. He did have one turnover, but he is executing the play action pass well. Yeah, I thought Peyton Manning, I haven't seen him play in person in a while. I'm very impressed with his poise in the pocket. I thought his control of the offense was outstanding. He doesn't have a lot of yards throwing the football just because his guys are getting tackled as soon as they catch the ball. If those receivers will make one break and go distance, then he'll have some bigger yards. All right, guys, there was a bowl final this afternoon, the Peach Bowl, and for the 14th straight year, the game was decided by seven points or less. Auburn was down 17 to six, entering the final quarter, outscored them 15 to nothing in the final quarter, and the SEC is now five and zero oh in the postseason. And earlier tonight, live on our College Football Today pregame show, the most rewarding pass play of the season. A 10-yard toss. Terry Fletcher collecting in the second half. Joe Walker among the men back deep for the Cornhuskers. Kevin Wiggins standing alongside. Here's Jeff Hall with the kickoff. And a good boot with the wind. And it'll be down to the back of the end zone. By Wiggins, Sean McDonough and Terry Donahue. Obviously, the three turnovers, Terry, very costly to Tennessee in the first half. But the good news for them, Nebraska had just 69 yards rushing, and Peyton Manning was not sacked. Well, the Tennessee offensive line has certainly played better than anticipated. Uh, Tennessee's throwing the ball very quickly, though, and they only have 100 yards in total passing yardage. But the shocking thing is Tennessee has rushed for as many yards, more yards. They've rushed for 80. Nebraska only 69. They're the number one rushing team in America. Nebraska on the ground in the first play of the second half, and Amon Green went out across the 25. Sean, during the last two years that I've watched Tennessee, I've never seen them play as good on defense as they're playing tonight. They are really doing an excellent job against this Nebraska offensive football team. Fewest yards rushing Nebraska has had in one game this season is 335. No opponent has held them under 335. It was Texas A&M that held them, quote unquote, to 335 in the Big 12 championship. Frost a late pitch, but right on target. And I'm on green. Is out of bounds with a first down just across the 30-yard line. Chased out by Gerald Griffin. Here's a look at the first half stats. Three turnovers very costly to Tennessee. Led directly to the 14 Nebraska points. Well, and this is critical right there. And remember, Scott Frost has carried the ball eight times in the first half for a point four yard average. He's under a yard per carry, which is just a tremendous job by that defense. On first and 10, Green cuts back and lunges forward off the hit of Corey Gaines. The quarterback comparison, both with an impressive percentage, but as Terry mentioned a moment ago, the yardage totals aren't very high. No, they really aren't. I think Tennessee in this half will try to put the ball down the field a little further now that they believe they can protect. They proved that in the first half, that they can protect Peyton Manning. He's on the target tonight. He's, he's on the money. He looks good to me. Uh, five or six hours a day in the training room for Peyton Manning have certainly paid off. His knee has held up well. McAvicka rumbling into the secondary. Terry Fair trying to collar him, and finally he did at the 41-yard line of Tennessee. 24-yard gain for Joel McAvicka, the junior from Brainerd, Nebraska. Joel McAvicka reminds 
the Nebraska people of Rathburn, the great, the great fullback who played at Nebraska, then the 49ers. It's just a little role play to the fullback. He finds the seam behind the big offensive line, breaks a tackle, spins out, and then drags Tennessee for the first down. This is a walk-on, a former walk-on, one of the famous Nebraska walk-ons. From a football family, his brother Jeff was Nebraska's starting fullback in 1995. Frost keeps. Raynock Thompson, who's been in and out of the game with well, a sprained ankle, wrapped up Frost. Scott advanced the ball to the 37-yard line, a gain of four. We mentioned McAvicka from a football family. Not only did his brother Jeff play at Nebraska, but their dad, John, was an NAIA All-American at Kearney State in the late 60s and was inducted into the Nebraska College Football Hall of Fame in the fall of 96. 6.5 yards per rush, best among all fullbacks in the nation. Boy, and certainly Nebraska's best blocking fullback. He does so many things for Nebraska. Nice block by Billy Legate, who took over from McAvicka at fullback. He cleared a path for Ramon Green. And Corey Gaines and Gerald Griffin had to take him down to the secondary. First down, Nebraska. The Huskers impressively on the move to begin the second half. Watch Billy Legate, the fullback, number 40, Sean. You mentioned his block. He's right here. He's going to isolate on the linebacker for Tennessee. This is why tailbacks can cut flat back. He really makes a tremendous block, which opens that hole. Two minutes into the second half. 14 to 3, Nebraska. And one long drive in the first half, a 78-yard touchdown drive. They're marching here. That play goes to the 20 for Amon Green. Leonard Little and Corey Gaines combining to put the stop on Green. It seems to me like Tom Osborne and his coaches went in at halftime and said, hey, fellas, we've never had 69 yards rushing at halftime against anybody. We're going to go back out there and control the line of scrimmage and start to establish a running game. Already... More rushing yards on this drive than they had in either of the first two quarters of the football game. Second down and seven. Out of the shotgun. They love quarterback draw out of the shotgun. And Frost is very close to a first down. Al Wilson and Leonard Little on the stop. Philip Fulmer seen there on the sidelines. Got to be concerned. You know, you go in at halftime, you're in the ball game, you know your team's made some turnovers some mistakes that has really hurt you in the ball game you come out you want to get off to a good start in the second half and here nebraska takes the opening kickoff and is really mounting a powerful drive and i say power because they've kept it on the ground and they're knocking them off the ball right now something they were unable to do in the first half it is a first down and historically that's been the case this nebraska attack wears out the defense after a while it's harder and harder to stand up to the pounding of this relentless rushing attack. From the 13, first and 10. Newcomb. Bobby's down at the five. He lunged ahead to move the ball toward the four. He came into Nebraska as a quarterback, an outstanding prospect out of Albuquerque, recruited by most of the top programs in the nation. They moved in the wing back this season, but Frank Solich will be the new head coach after this game, says he will get a look at Newcomb at quarterback to replace Frost in the spring. Well, and you can certainly understand that, Sean. He's one of the fastest guys on Nebraska's team. Tom Osborne with a little counterplay there to Bobby Newcomb to take advantage of the fast flow of Tennessee's defense. Green following Joel McAvicka's block. Green has the first down. And it'll be first and goal for the Huskers at the two. Well, this is the last game for Tom Osborne. After 25 years as head coach, there's Frank Solich. 19 years as an assistant to Osborne, former outstanding running back at Nebraska back in the mid-60s. And Solich will take over. Frank Solich actually knew before the season began that this would be Tom Osborne's last year. So Tom told me this was going to be it. But the two of them kept it a secret. 11th play of the drive, and it is stopped at the goal line. Leonard Little put the pop on Amon Green. Tom Osborne has a number of longtime assistants, but no lack of harmony on the staff. 
The rest of the staff members knew six years ago when Osborne made Solich the assistant head coach that that really was Tom's way of designating Solich as the man he'd like to see succeed him. Well, and Tom said the timing for him to retire was perfect because he could help influence who his successor would be. The university president and athletic director agreed with the decision. Frost up and over and in for a touchdown. An impressive opening drive. Never mind the passes or the play action fakes. Nebraska goes back to its bread and butter. And they made that look easy. Boy, that offensive line has come out in the second half and reestablished the line of scrimmage. Scott Frost in there by at least a yard, a yard and a half behind the big left guard, Aaron Taylor, the, the center, number 59, Josh Heskew. Frost might have been shaken up. He's pointing to his left calf. Darwin Walker's going off, grabbing at the back of his neck. Sean, have you noticed how many Tennessee players have left the game already? One of the difficult things when you play Nebraska, they are so physical and so strong and so deep, they begin to just wear you out. Chris Brown on for the extra point. And it is good. 80-yard drive by Nebraska to begin the second half. Half by Nebraska. And the lead is 21-3 for the Cornhuskers. Tennessee about to get the ball for the first time. In the second half, Cedric Wilson took Chris Brown's kickoff at the goal line. Nice moves to get across the 20. And now he powers out to the 20. Return by Wilson. Let's get an update on the condition of Scott Frost. Here's Michelle Tafoya. All right, Sean. Well, Scott is uh, suffering cramps in both calves, but more in the left than the right. But he told me he's fine. Quarterback coach Turner Gill came over concerned, asking if they needed ice to rub those calves down. But the training staff said they didn't even need that. Back to you. On that drive, 12 plays, 80 yards, 74 of them on the ground. And the one pass, which the official score deemed the pass, was that shovel pass. They had 74 yards rushing on the opening drive of the half after 69 yards rushing the entire first half. Jamal Lewis out to the 29. A gain of two for the freshman. Sean, in visiting with Philip Fulmer this week prior to the game, he said one of the things that we have to do to win this game, we've got to answer when Nebraska scores. Nebraska's really tough when they get ahead by a couple touchdowns because they control the ball on you because they're a ground-oriented game and so they consequently eat up the clock Phillips says we've got to come back and answer this is an important drive on second and eight and they show patience with the run but it yields nothing that time Mike Rucker and Jason Peter at the bottom of the pile for Nebraska It'll be third down and eight. Nebraska's gone to their nickel package, put their fifth defensive back in the game, expecting pass. Three wide receivers, no tight end for Tennessee. Manning running out of time. He's sacked by Mike Rucker. The first sack of Manning tonight. Rucker, the left defensive end, number 84. He runs a little inside stunt move. He's the one that comes underneath, slips on a little crack in the Tennessee line there to sack Peyton Manning. Peyton just never had time to get that arm cocked and get the ball down the field. Now Chris Hogue with his worst punt of the night. But he did get a good bounce. Hogue averaged 61 yards per punt on three punts. In the first half, that one wound up going 43. There is a flag down at the 41-yard line. And it's for an illegal block in the back against Nebraska. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team during the kick. 
close scrimmage kick enforcement, 10 yards from the end of the kick, first down. Sean, I really think the Nebraska offense is it one of the toughest in the country to stop. Back in a moment. Big sight on the web. Get in on the action at cbs.sportsline.com. Nebraska on offense for the second time in the second half. They stay on the ground. It's Amon Green with running room again. Out to the 35. Terry, obviously, just before the break, you didn't have a chance to finish your thought about the Nebraska offense. Well, Sean, I was making the point, it's such a tough offense to stop because they run one back, two back, three back offense. They have multiple formations, an option game, a power game with their tailback, a trap game with their fullback, a mobile quarterback, and all of a sudden, they just stress you on defense until you come apart, and you couple all that with some quality play-action passing. It's just hard to defend it. Green up the middle, and he ran into Raynock Thompson. Might be having the best game of his career tonight. We've seen him several times, and can't remember Thompson being as much of a factor as he has been in this one. Well, some question Tennessee is a number three team. The players all talk about it. They've developed a reputation for not winning the big one, large part because they haven't been able to defeat Florida during the Peyton Manning era and before that, actually. But I think we're seeing tonight, this is a very good Tennessee team. A lot of good athletes who can really run on defense. No question. They played the Nebraska offense as well in that first half as any defense I've ever seen play against the Nebraska offense. If their own offense hadn't turned it over, I'm not sure Nebraska would have scored in the first half. Frost picks it at the last second. Look out. Amon Green with one man to beat. And he could not beat him. Terry Fair made the touchdown-saving tackle at the 21-yard line of Tennessee, a 43-yard pickup for Green. Scott Frost is the master, the magician, with running the option play. He comes down the line of scrimmage here. He gets the ball pitched. Sometimes he never even looks. This time he does. He lays it off perfectly. McAvicka leading the way. And Amon Green, the speedster, gets a crack in the defense and then just turns it downfield. He now has 113 yards rushing. McAvicka weaving his way to the right. The gain to the 17. Four-yard pickup. Ron Green and Leonard Little made the tackle. So that's 12 straight games now with 100 yards rushing or more for Amon Green. And I think you have to ask yourself, what is the difference in this second half as compared to the first half? Why can Nebraska run the ball all of a sudden now in the second half where they couldn't in the first half? And I think it has to do with that intensity of the offensive line. They seem to have a little skip in their step, if you will, in this second half, where in the first half they didn't seem to. And Tennessee is not penetrating quite as much as they were able to in the first half. Green up the middle. A lot of tired-looking arm tackles from the defensive front now for Tennessee. Corey Noel had to come up from the secondary to help Corey Terry, the defensive end. And it's close to a first down. Terry McCauley, the referee, says it is a first down just outside the tent. So they could get another first down very close to the goal line. And the double whammy for the Tennessee defense is not only is Nebraska moving and scoring points, but they chew up the clock while they do it. Well, that's the way they play. They love to run the ball, and they're going to get 80 plays a game, and 68 or 70 of them are going to be runs. Frost keeps. Frost touchdown! He might still be cramping up a little bit. You saw him trying to stretch as he went into the end zone. Scott Frost was certainly silenced in the first half, but has responded in the second half. This is a design quarterback keep. He follows the tailback, Amon Green. He's the only guy that's supposed to have the ball on this play. He's a great runner. They want him to carry it into the end zone. Frost had a Nebraska record 19 rushing touchdowns during the regular season. That's the school record for quarterbacks. And he is two tonight. Don't count on the stats and the bowl games do not factor in. That run went 11. It's 28-3. The Cornhuskers starting to make a statement. 
Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoy, and Ed Cunningham. Delighted to have you with us for the FedEx Orange Bowl from Miami. Nebraska has taken control, leading by 25. Still five minutes left in the third quarter. Cedric Wilson ran into traffic at the 27-yard line. Once again, folks, we remind you that the Chevrolet Scholarship Program is in effect tonight, and later in tonight's game, we will be giving you the Chevrolet Players of the Game. First and ten. Tennessee needs to do something, and they need to do it quickly. The pass caught by Marcus Nash, the senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, with 76 catches coming into tonight, but he's had a quiet night in this one. Well, he really has, Sean. Tennessee's been unable to get the ball very effectively to Marcus Nash. One of the adjustments Tennessee has just made, they went to the shotgun that time. They're not, they've not been in the shotgun very often, but the pressure is starting to mount uh, on Peyton Manning, and they're trying to get him off the line a little bit. From the 32, second and six. A lob looking for Nash. He has it. And he's across midfield. Erwin Sweeney made the tackle. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Nash has a 20-yard gain in his fourth reception of the night. Well, this is a great job. Marcus Nash getting off the bump and run coverage of Erwin Sweeney, the, the freshman, number 16. And Peyton Manning lays this ball up beautifully. Nash goes up. Tremendous concentration. Come. Peyton Manning here under rush. They got him on that knee a little bit. Jay Foreman hit him after the ball was gone. Jamal Lewis off right tackle, found the hole. He's down at the 41-yard line. Quality gain of seven on first down for Lewis. There's Jay Foreman, the junior from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, who made the stop. He's had an up-and-down career in Nebraska, was a starter as a redshirt freshman in 95, and last year he backed up John Hess. Now he's back in the starting lineup as a junior. Second on the team with those 61 tackles. Three and a half minutes remaining, third quarter. Manning throws, caught again by Nash. No, incomplete now, say the officials. And Nash was wide open with the throw a bit errant. Well, I think this is what Tennessee has to try and do is get the ball upfield more. I know early in the game they wanted to hit the short passes, but they need to drive those defensive backs off Marcus Nash. That ball just went right through his hands. Peyton Manning has been plagued all season long with drop passes by his wide receivers. And I take back what I said about that being an Aaron throw. Nash slipped, and that might have hurt his chances of catching it. Manning throws short of Jermaine Copeland. Now it's fourth down and four, and down by 25. I don't think Philip Fuller has any choice here, Terry, other than to go for it. Yeah, I, Grant Wistrom, the Great defensive lineman, the Lombardi Trophy winner. He has been quiet in the first half, but he's starting to turn it up, and he's a guy that just gives you great second effort all the time. He's always working at getting to the quarterback. Big play here for Tennessee as they cling the hopes of a comeback. Fourth and four, blitz, caught, first down. He had the forward progress beyond the marker as Eric Warfield put the collar on Jermaine Copeland but it is a first down just inside the 37 yard line but Jermaine Copeland just ran right down the field turned around and stopped and Peyton Manning threw the ball right at him it's a great throw he hits him right between the numbers you can watch him in the slot he just turned around the ball's there on time Copeland gets the first down clock down to three minutes and change remaining in the third quarter Lewis, close to another first down. He had one man to beat, and he was gone. Instead, it's a gain of nine. And it'll be second and one at the 28-yard line of Nebraska. Boy, Sean, that was a nice cut by Jamal Lewis, the freshman tailback. He made a couple Cornhuskers miss there. He is a powerful runner. We're looking at a guy 
I think will be the next Heisman Trophy candidate at the University of Tennessee as he gets a little more experience, a little more maturity. He is 67 yards rushing tonight on 13 carries. He gets the handoff again, burst through the hole, ran into his own man, and that might have prevented a touchdown. Instead, he's down at the five-yard line. Tackled by Eric Johnson, a reserve linebacker. 23 yards on the rush for Lewis, and the Volunteers are on the move. But Jamal Lewis on the isolation play finds a crack in the Nebraska defense. He will go ahead and cut this ball back, and he's going to run in to Jermaine Copeland. <laughs> Number six is right in the way. He makes the tackle, or, or at least prevents the touchdown for sure. Hold him down long enough for Johnson to make the stop. First and goal at the five. Manning looking in the end zone. Running out of time. Throws. Touchdown! Here the Price with the reception for the Tennessee score. And it appears they will go for two. You saw Manning holding up the two fingers and the sideline held up two. Looking back at the offense. is a quarterback who can throw on the run as well as he works out of the pocket. Tennessee does a good job. They get him away from the pressure of Nebraska by sprinting him out, buying him time enough to find the open receiver. It's amazing how much better Peyton Manning's knee is in just a couple of days. We watched him practice that play a couple of days ago, and he really hobbled as he rolled to his right tonight. No sign of any hit. Sean, it's amazing. I didn't think he was healthy for the ball game, but he clearly is. Out of the shotgun, the try for two. He throws incomplete. Looking again for Peerless Price. Erwin Sweeney had the coverage. So it's 28 to 9 with a minute 58 remaining in the third quarter. The FedEx Orange Bowl from Miami. The master at running the option, but what a block by Joel Makabeka, number 45, the fullback. He'll be way out in the corner. Frost comes down, pitches. Watch 45, the lead blocker. He gets the Tennessee man down that allows that crease to open up for Amon Green. Chris Brown adds another extra point. Makabeka playing courageously with a very sore hamstring, but he told us a couple of days ago there would be nothing that would keep him out of this game. Well, and he just won't come out of a football game. They say if they do get him out, he'll rest a play or two, and he'll walk right back onto the field. And I think you have to credit the wide receivers of Nebraska. They're doing a great job downfield. Number 14, Lance Brown. There's just blocks all over the field that allows Amon Green to hit those creases. Twenty-nine seconds remaining in the third quarter. There's Aaron Taylor, the outstanding left guard in his final game in Nebraska. Sean, what you have to do now if you're Tennessee, Phil Fulmer's got the toughest job on his hands. He's got to get his team over here, and he's got to say, hey, listen, fellas, we've got to keep competing. We're playing against a great football team. We've got to show our stuff now in the fourth quarter. We've worked hard. We've had a great season. You look back, Tennessee's been in sudden death ever since they lost the Florida game. Every week's been sudden death for them. Now they've got to sit in there and be competitive and just not get run out of here. Sudden death because they knew after the one loss to Florida, if they wanted to win the SEC championship, which they said is their main goal, and be in the alliance, which has eluded them in recent years, they needed to win out. So every game had that sense of urgency, and Coach Fulmer's team did run the table to earn him a contract extension. Announced a couple of days ago through the year 2003 with a hefty pay raise. They'll make about $750,000 per year over the course of that contract. Well, it's amazing what's happened to contracts in college football. Said that as if you might ponder going back. <laughs> no, no, no. Darden out to the 30-yard line. 22-yard return. Well, Philip Fulmer doesn't get much attention around the country. And believe it or not, he does have some critics in the state of Tennessee. But all he's done is become the winningest 
coach of all time by percentage among those with a minimum of five years coaching. Phillips in his sixth. And Tom Osborne is number two. I think Philip Fulmer is a very underrated, underappreciated at times coach at the University of Tennessee and primarily because of the Florida series. That's been the That's series right. that he's just not been able to get over the hump of. Just a couple of wins against the Gators. He would be a fully beloved figure in the state of Tennessee. Lewis tackled from behind by Jason Peter. Terrific play by Peter when it looked like Lewis was ready to break away. You wonder if the balls are going to go without a huddle now. They won't have time, it seems, to get another playoff in the third quarter. They do not. The third quarter dominated by Nebraska. Point Huskers trying to make a statement for the national championship. End of three, 35-9 Nebraska. We'll return to the Bennett Corner. Tom Osborne and Peyton Manning. Each in his final game at his respective university. Manning throws very short. Out to the 34-yard line, perhaps the 35, a gain of two. Well, it used to be people would talk in college football about if you rely on the run, you can't score quickly. That's one of the weaknesses. Well, we saw 21 points in a blizzard of rushing yards. Unbelievable performance in that third quarter by Nebraska. No question about it. What's interesting is why has it happened all of a sudden? And I think one of the reasons Tennessee's not tackling as well this half as they did in the first half. Nebraska 227 yards rushing in the third quarter. Jamal Lewis chopped down short of a first down, about a yard short. Brandon Harrison, junior from Gainesville, Texas. Backup quarterback made the tackle. He's in his first year at Nebraska as a junior college transfer. On a maze, down 35 to 9. 14 minutes left. One yard to go. They're punting. Bobby Newcomb waiting for the punt from Chris Hogue. Well, <laughs> they're offside and then some. Grant Wistrom, very anxious, coming around right end. Question is, was he drawn off? Ball start. Yes, he was. Five yards, fourth down. Wistrom said it would be just awful. He couldn't imagine what it would be like if Nebraska did not win Tom Osborne's last game. And his teammates and Grant himself delivering a big performance tonight. So now it's fourth and six, and Newcomb goes back to the 22-yard line with Shevin Wiggins waiting for the punt from Chris Hogue. Another nose-up spiral of beauty again. Shevin Wiggins from the 20, straight up the middle and down to the 28-yard line. 48 yards on the punt by Hogue. Frustration continues for Peyton Manning and Tennessee. Action. And in the Tennessee seating areas as well. We'll make that observation because a lot of the volunteer fans have left. Jay Sims in at eye back. Back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Here's Michelle. Well, guys, Mike Osborne, the oldest of Coach Tom Osborne's three kids, is down here on the sidelines with a handheld video camera documenting his father's last game. He told me right now he's just really focused on the game, but if it keeps going like it's going, he's bound to get nostalgic, and he's sure his dad is too, guys. And as was mentioned before the game, the biggest reason Tom Osborne wanted to step aside now was his family. He admits that his wife Nancy more or less raised their children by herself. He was putting in 17-hour days coaching football. Sheldon Jackson tackled by Corey Gaines. A rare pass here in the second half called by Coach Osborne. And it's another first down for Nebraska. Sean, most coaches' wives raise the families. Coaches are gone 12, 15, 18-hour days at times. And the wives are called upon to do that. And certainly Tom is no exception when it comes to that. Well, Mike is hoping he can turn his dad into... A golfer, Tom Osborne, prefers fishing in his rare free moments. Frost, the keeper, now to the 45. What a turnaround it's been for Scott Frost at Nebraska. He took over for Tommy Frazier, one of the most popular players and successful players in Nebraska history. And they were coming off with back-to-back -back national titles when the team struggled early last year and had lost at Arizona State 
much of the criticism from the Nebraska fans directed at Frost. He was booed. And he bristled at that, spoke out against it. Now he has been embraced, but you get the sense talking to him, he still remembers the booze, too. Well, there's no question. Scott Frost made a poor decision out of high school when he chose Stanford because he, he didn't fit in the Stanford offense. Stanford's a great school, but he didn't fit there. He wanted to play for Bill Walsh, but he didn't have the kind of throwing arm you needed. He made a great decision when he decided to come back home and get into this offense because he's a dominant player in it. Here's the backup to Steve Stenstrom for two years at Stanford. Two losing seasons. He wanted to go back where he knew he would play on a winning team and be a key member. Frost. Close to another first down at the Tennessee 37-yard line. Nice blocking by Jeff Lake. The wide receivers really are glorified blockers in this offense. Boy, they do a tremendous job on the perimeter with those blocks. Scott Frost running the option to perfection. He loves to keep the ball and hit the crease in the defense. The big red machine right now is starting to roll. What was interesting about Frost's decision to go to Stanford, too, is that he has a lengthy family history at the University of Nebraska. Both parents were athletes at the State University. His dad, Larry, was a football player. His mother, Carol, a track athlete. Mother Carol won the discus in the Pan Am Games in 67, went on to the 68 Olympics. Now, Scott's a great student as well, and, you know, he talked about wanting to get the education at Stanford and wanting to just kind of get away from Nebraska, try something new. Interesting about Carol Frost, she remains involved in sports in football. There's Larry Frost and Carol. Larry Frost is the head coach at the high school which Scott Frost attended in Wood River, Nebraska. And Carol Frost is an assistant coach. She coaches the wide receivers and the defensive ends. And the other day, when most of the mothers of the Nebraska players went to the Seaquarium here in Miami, Mrs. Frost said she'd rather stay in the hotel and watch the NFL playoff games. And that's what she did. Frost on the carry. Close to a first down of the 28. Deion Grant made the tackle. Well, you can see Scott Frost, when he has the ball in his hands, he's following Amon Green, the tailback here. This is a design keep. Amon Green blocks the linebacker, and there's a hole in the defense for Frost. And he's like having another tailback in the backfield. You're talking about a guy that weighs 220 pounds. He's strong, tough. He's got it all, except he's not a great thrower. Has an awkward motion, which undoubtedly Bill Walsh would like to have worked with had Scott stayed there had Bill Walsh stayed at Stanford for that matter but he is effective despite the throwing motion no question he's thrown for over a thousand yards mostly with play action type passing he's going to play in a couple of the postseason senior all-star games and while he would like to play some quarterback to prove that he is one of the best quarterbacks in the country he realizes that he probably should play defense because if he has a future in the NFL and many think he does it is as a defensive back he reminds me of nolan cromwell the great option quarterback from kansas who had a wonderful pro career that's who he looks like on fourth and one frost the pitch to green and it's a loose ball leonard little ran by it now it's picked up and you cannot advance that pitch but darwin walker recovered and didn't really matter because it was fourth down anyway tennessee was going to get the ball and they have it at about the 32. Terry Fair, number 13, the defensive back from Tennessee, does a great job. He makes the quarterback pitch this ball. He's, he makes, he stretches it, he stretches it, then all of a sudden the ball's pitched. The lead back, Amon Green, had gotten ahead of him a little bit, and Frost didn't get it done. And the coaches, Frost, upset about an opportunity gone around. Donahue, Michelle Tafoy, and Ed Cunningham back at the FedEx Orange Bowl in Miami. Nebraska takes over. 9-14 remaining. Manning's pass incomplete. Here's Ed Cunningham, a Hall of Famer, better known these days as Peyton's dad. <laughs> We're here with Archie Manning. Archie, I know it's not how you want it to turn out, but can you talk about the emotions you're feeling right now? Well, you know, I hate to see them lose. Nebraska's a great team and all, but um, I, in a way, I hate to see it come to an end for, for Peyton and all his buddies that are seniors because it's been a great ride for them. I'm sure they'd like for tonight to be better, but this is a great team, and it's, it's been a great experience for them. It's been a great experience for, for the Manning family. We've had a wonderful time. Take a short break for the play. And as a light rain begins to fall, Manning's pass to Lewis. 
And Jamal thrown for loss back to Ed. As a parent, he made a huge decision last year to, to turn down a lot of money and come back. What was it like as a parent to see him make that decision? Well, we were proud of him. It, it had to be his decision, and we were going to support him if he had come out. But it, it, in his heart, it's what he wanted to do, and we were proud the way he did all the research and his due diligence, and that's what he wanted to do. I think it, it's, it said a lot. I, made, I think it had an impact on some others, and, you know, I'm glad it worked out for him. I'm glad he was able to stay healthy this year, and, and they won a championship. And um, he's, I'm glad he stayed. He, he is, too. We're proud of him. Archie, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the ball game. Pass incomplete. Here comes the punting unit. Well, believe it or not, there is another Manning coming along. Peyton's younger brother, Eli, is a high school quarterback, a junior in New Orleans. Some say at that stage of his development, he's better as a junior in high school than Peyton Manning was. And if that's the case, it's a frightening prospect. But Eli already very highly recruited. No question about that, Sean. But if he is, he's something special. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he is. Because, but Peyton Manning, he represents everything you like about college football. Everything. I can't imagine having a, a more complete player and person than, than this guy is. You can't carry yourself as a college athlete with any more class or dignity grace than Peyton Manning has 39 yard punt back in a moment seven rushing yards they had 69 at the half that's still their lowest total of the season with eight more they'll match their lowest total and Amon Green has a chance at the Orange Bowl record for rushing yards in a game 205 is the record they give it to Amon Green and he's to the 35 for a gain of one Monday on CBS, kick off the new year with a night of great television. Fun starts with Cosby, as it always does. Then it's the show critics are raving about. Everybody loves Raymond. Followed by Bob Newhart and Judd Hirsch and George and Leo. Then say hello to the new Monday comedy style and substance. Finally, the most important new drama on television, Brooklyn South. All Monday night on CBS. Newcomb takes the pitch. He can fly. He's still flying. Flag down to the secondary. Newcomb inside the 25. And down to the 16. An important flag, perhaps, for Nebraska and for Michigan. Because you wonder, Terry, if people look at comparative scores, if 35 to 9 isn't enough to sway some, would 42 to 9 be enough to sway some? And I think that's why the Frost family, for example, was so agitated in the reaction to that field fourth down. They know every point could be crucial. No question about it. The, that turnover that Scott Frost had on that option play, now this big play called back again, it probably will influence some voters one way or another. Eric Anderson, number 70, the big right tackle, he hustles down the field after trying to make his block, and on the pitch play, Newcomb, Bobby Newcomb, comes down the sideline, and Anderson, yep. right in the back there, pushing in the back, gets called and brings that play back. Good call. It was a good call. They, they saw it right. They've done a very good job tonight, these officials, from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Eric Anderson, uh, number seven on, on Deion Grant, the defensive back for Tennessee. And it's, it's the officials right there on the spot. You hate to bring a play back like that, but that's what, that's what happens. Walked off from the spot at second down and six. Huskers at their own 38. Frost, the pitch to Green, running room in the corner. He's into Tennessee territory, down at the 47-yard line. You know what's interesting, too, Sean? The Nebraska offense, you could only run this style of offense in certain atmospheres. There's a lot of places around the country you can't run this offense. The fans don't like it. It's not wide open enough in, in some people's mind because it's so run-oriented, and people want to throw the ball. But this offense is perfect for Lincoln, Nebraska. They love it. All they do is win, set a five-year record for the best record in the history of college football with it. Magavica dancing through traffic. Look at Frost hustling downfield to throw a block. Torrey Noel made the tackle with a 37. First down, Nebraska. The physicalness of the Nebraska offense has just worn Tennessee down in the second half. Tennessee played tremendous defense in the first half, but now that powerful offensive line and that relentless attack by the Big Red is just wearing them down, and they've had a lot of injuries as well on defense. A lot of players have left the game. Jay Sims back in at eye bag. Here he goes. 
Almost went the distance. Deion Grant made the tackle. 14 for Sims. He is the eye back. Amon Green is one yard short of the Orange Bowl rushing record with 204 yards tonight. Well, I think it's safe to say if Amon Green gets back into the game, he'll get that Orange Bowl record the way these holes are beginning to really open up against the Tennessee defense. The true freshman, Burrell Buckhalter, is in it. Eye back now. And Frost might be changing the play. Five on the play clock. Here's Buck Halter. Fresh legs driving down inside the 15-yard line. Unprecedented run of success for this senior class, the recruiting class of 1993 for Nebraska. The 48-2 record, the best ever. Two national titles, perhaps a third. Three conference titles and a perfect record at home. Other than that, they didn't do much. John, the offense is overpowering. It might be easier to stop the Big Red Army of China than the Big Red Army of Lincoln, Nebraska. Green needs a yard to tie the record. That looks like a gain of two. Jonathan Brown made the stop. That is a two-yard gain officially for Green, and he now has the Orange Bowl record for rushing yards in a game, 206 on 29 carries, breaking the mark set by Roland Sales of Arkansas against Oklahoma in the 1978 Orange Bowl. Makovica inside the 10th fumble, and it's still free. And you wonder, not to overly dramatize the point, if that could be <laughs> a national championship saving recovery for the Cornhuskers. If Every point matters, and votes are being swayed based on comparative scores and the like. Then this is big. Uh, you watch the power and the precision of the Nebraska offense, and it's, it's unmatched in the country. No one has an offensive team as powerful as this one. They just don't. They're, Michigan certainly has a top-ranked defense, the best defense in the country. Brooks scores another touchdown. His third of the night. has stepped it up a notch here in the second half. It's the fake to the fullback, follow the tailback. It's a design keeper. They've run it about eight times tonight. That's what Scott Frost has responded with in the second half. Chris Brown added the extra point. 42-9 Nebraska. Three touchdowns tonight for Scott Frost. 42 to nine for Nebraska. The question becomes, is it enough? To get the Cornhuskers a peak, at the very least, the national championship. Tom Osborne, one, two. Been a part of the program for four in his 36 years at Nebraska. Started in 1962 with an assistant to Bob Devaney. Chris Brown to kick off. And Cedric Wilson back deep. Good kick with the wind. Wilson gets a touchback. And it looks like Peyton Manning's career at Tennessee is over. As T. Martin has a helmet on, he's ready to run onto the field. Well, I think this is certainly understandable. Peyton Manning has done absolutely everything he could in his power for the University of Tennessee. This is a good opportunity for T. Martin. Also, you, you make sure Peyton Manning comes out of this game healthy. I think this is the right decision. Why not give Manning one more play and let him run off to an ovation that he has deserved? Well, either way, but not a lot of Tennessee fans left here, John. <laughs> Handoff up the middle. Travis Stevens, a true freshman, taking the handoff. 
Manning ends his career holding every passing record at the University of Tennessee. The SEC Player of the Year this year. And he ranks number one all time in the SEC in completion percentage and completions and in lowest interception ratio. And you know he hates ending his career like this. He's such a fierce competitor. Martin over the middle to Sean Bryson. Well, the point was made at the top of the telecast. He might have cost himself some money because he didn't come out last year. I think he could care less about that. He's going to make more Fun. money in all likelihood <laughs> than he'll ever need. That's right. And he came back because he wanted to be a senior in college and experience the entirety of what that entails as he, a student and as an athlete. You know, Sean, you're right. He came back for all the right reasons. Things didn't work out exactly, probably, as he would have wished. But that's life, and, he, and you learn something there, too. That's all part of the experience. And he talked about the experience. That's why he came back. He wanted to continue with his college education and with that experience. Let's turn our attention to the larger issue now. Who is number one, the best team in the nation? This situation, again, cries out for a playoff because it's obviously difficult to choose either team. Whichever team is not the national championship is going to feel that it is short change with good reason. But here's the statistical comparison. Our crew, I don't think, was overly generous in awarding Nebraska a victory in this game. Nice throw by Martin. And Andy McCullough's running free in the secondary. You know, much was made that Michigan played a tougher schedule, but I think as we look at the bowl game results, Terry, the Big Ten might have been exposed for not being as strong as people said it was all season long. The Big Ten really struggled in bowl games, two and five, including Michigan's victory. And uh, their out-of-conference games, Baylor and Notre Dame and Colorado, Beginning of the year, that looks tough, but Notre Dame had a disappointing year. Colorado had a very disappointing year. Baylor was not a very good team. Where Nebraska out of the league, went out and played a very good Washington team in Seattle, as you know, one of the toughest places in the nation to play, and won easily. Well, I, th I think if you're one of the AP 70 writers who are going to vote on this decision, or one of the 62 coaches who vote in the coaches poll, you've got to really sit down and think about this, because... It would be, a, you know, in many ways, to me, a tragedy if, if, if Brian Greasy and Charles Woodson, you know, you look at Greasy, the road of a walk-on to MVP in the Rose Bowl, Woodson, the Heisman Trophy winner, if they don't get a share of the national championship, there's something wrong. They did everything they were asked to do. But at the same time, Scott Frost and Joel Makaveka and those guys, they did everything they were asked to do. Yes, they did. Martin lost his helmet. And he is sacked, and there is a flag thrown in the secondary. It's the second sack of a Tennessee quarterback tonight. 2.04 remaining. Nebraska leads 42 to 9. And the officials confer about the penalty. <laughs> Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game are Peyton Manning of Tennessee and Amon Green of Nebraska. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial needs. Could also be Amon Green's last game. He told us the other day he's not certain he'll come back for his senior year. Penalty against Nebraska. Well, I think if these two teams play, Michigan and Nebraska, Nebraska would be the favorite. Remember, we listen to a radio program here in South Florida today, and who cares what the odds makers say, but they called out and the odds makers said, Nebraska would be the favorite in the game by about a touchdown. That doesn't matter. But I think both teams are great on defense. You have to say Nebraska has an edge on offense. Well, that might be. But, Sean, I have my own personal beliefs, and, and I really think that the national championship should be shared by these two teams. That's just what I believe. Mm -hmm. I, rem I remember in 90, uh, Colorado, Georgia Tech, they shared it. I agree with you, by the way. N 91. I'm just saying, I know you for do. those who awarded the thing to Michigan after they won yesterday, that really short changes this Nebraska team. That's just and, not. Uh, I agree with you. They both deserve it. One, if it isn't a split, somebody is going to be deservedly very upset. I remember in 91, Miami, Washington. Uh, I had a vote in the coaches' poll in 90 and 91, and I voted both teams in the first place. And 
you know, you, I, I just think you better weigh it because, boy, a national championship is such a special thing to players and coaches. It means so much. T. Martin can really run. He's inside the five. With a minute two remaining, an 11-yard game. Well, it's up to the voters now. Each team stated its case over the last two days. And unfortunately, that Super Alliance, which comes in next year, may not solve the problem. This year, you could have had three undefeated teams, all with a great claim for number one, if Florida State had won at Florida. Then what do you do in your Super <laughs> Alliance? That's you got a game with two teams, three who could make a claim. Back in a moment. To number one. First and goal from the three. T. Martin into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Andy McCullough. Well, the air apparent to Peyton Manning. Drives the volunteers down the field and final act for Grant Wistrom and Jason Peter at Nebraska it seems will be to give Tom Osborne a bath. Well, you, you got to be impressed with T. Martin coming in off the bench. He took that team right on down to the score and throws across his body there and finds an open receiver in, in the end zone. Well, they're all set. I'm, I'm telling you, that is cold when you get that little shower there, but you love every second of it. Now the try for two. Martin was four for four on that drive. He swings it out. And there's the two-point conversion for Travis Stevens, the true freshman from Clarksville, Tennessee. 42-17, Nebraska. Second touchdown of the night, a 22-yarder. He has delivered a record-setting performance tonight. Only the real good players on the team, Sean, dare carry that bucket, you know. You look there, Jason Peter, Wistrom, those are the kind of guys that carry that bucket to get the old head coach. Looks like they're trying to give him some sort of a championship cap, and Tom said, that's okay, I like the one I'm on. You wouldn't expect him to change. So little has changed about the man and his program over the last 36 years. And they still run the same offense and defenses that Bob Devaney put in with help from Tom Osborne. They have the same numbering system. I mean, as if nothing has changed in that 36-year span. The one thing that certainly has not changed is winning. They've had 36 straight winning seasons. Well, I look at Tom Osborne, 25 years head coach, 25 straight bowls. I mean, it's incredible the job that he has done. As college football fans well know, he's not an emotional man, but you sense looking at the face that the emotions are now stirring the realization that in 58 seconds he'll walk off the sideline for the last time. And Nebraska will be the land of Oz no longer. Onside kick, recovered, but he was out of bounds, it seemed, from here. Yep, flag comes out. Andy McCullough fielded it, but he was on the Nebraska sideline. Wistrom and Peter inching closer. Penalties decline. First down. And the legacy of Tom Osborne. Here we go. There, ooh. Another <laughs> bath added to that legacy. And a hug from Jason Peter. And you can say what you want about the decisions he's made relative to some players over the years, but by and large, the vast majority of Nebraska players have been outstanding in the classroom, outstanding in the community. They have had some problems off the field. Some have questioned Osmond's decisions in that realm, but you can't deny that he does care unbelievably about his players, and they return that affection. No question about it, and there's not a program in America that hasn't had some form of problems. Nebraska uh, isn't uh, any different than anybody else when it comes to that. Clearly one of the great coaches of all time. And he's 20 seconds away from the career-ending victory. Only fitting that it would end with a victory and perhaps a national championship for Tom Osborne. 
He leaves us with 255 wins. And not a happy ending for Peyton Manning. As he heads toward the NFL. Tom Osborne heads for a fishing pole. Let's check in with Armin Kateyan. Peyton, obviously, first three turnovers in the first half. Tough to overcome to get the ball away to Nebraska. Yeah, that killed him. So you can't turn the ball over against a great team like Nebraska and expect to win. And uh, that really hurt us. We were hoping to play the state free football. We didn't do it. That hurt us. The wind, the pressure from the defense? Not really. Really just hurt ourselves most of the game. They're a great defense. You know, if you give them anything easy, their offense is going to make you pay. But we, you know, we really hurt ourselves all night. One professional question. Indianapolis has the first pick. Does that really, matter to you? I really don't know at this point. You know, it's my last college game, but now that it's over, I'll kind of make the next move and we'll just see what happens. Class act, Peyton. Sean, back to you. Thank you, Armin. Nebraska, a winner. 42 to 17, the final. As the Cornhuskers close out the ninth undefeated and untied season in the history of Nebraska football. The Nebraska fans chanting, we're number one, following the victory in the FedEx Orange Bowl over Tennessee tonight. Time again for the FedEx delivery of the game. And here it is, Amon Green. Second of his two touchdowns, 22 yards, part of his record-setting performance tonight. Now let's check in down on the field with Jim Nance. All right, thank you very much, Sean. So in the second half, Nebraska tonight piles up 340 rushing yards in the second half alone. Craig and Lou, you forecast that, Lou, for the second half. They would start mounting that big yardage. The big question, though, now, who's number one? Coach? Well, well, I think it is difficult not to give it to the University of Michigan. They did everything they need to do, went undefeated. But how do you look at Nebraska and say, hey, you put on an awesome performance all year, I can't vote you number one. I think they both ought to share it. I really, truly do until we have a playoff system because they both did everything you needed to do, which was go undefeated. Well, I, I can't straddle the fence. I've got to have a vote well, on this thing. And I've thought long and hard about it here in the second half. And I've really talked to a lot of people that I trust their opinions. And I think everybody's just like me. It's as unfortunate that we've been placed in this position here. Both of these football teams, Michigan and Nebraska, deserve to be national champions. So I've taken it down to this. Who would I vote for, number one, or who would I vote for on a game like this, Nebraska or Michigan? I think Nebraska and their option would win the football game and their defense would win it for them. I'm going to vote Nebraska number one in the country. I hate to do it because Michigan's done everything they, they should have done to win a national championship, but we got to vote, and I've done it. Why couldn't all the voters get together tonight, the chairman of one of the polls, say, hey, guys, give me your half vote to each team and go ahead and announce some co-champs. Why couldn't they do that? Because they won't do it because they say they have to vote. They select one. But Michigan did everything you could possibly do, but so did Nebraska. Now, it doesn't matter to the coach. It doesn't matter to the fans. It does matter to the players because years from now to say I was part of a national championship and there's no way that I think you can say no to either one. And, and I'm being honest the way yeah, I feel. And I think it's going to be unfortunate because it's going to come out of vote. And there's going to be controversy, which is going to continue to fuel, to fuel all the the spark and the desire for a national playoff on the field. Well, Coach Osborne goes out with his fourth straight bowl victory. He is a man who never changed in 25 years, a phlegmatic, unflappable figure on the sidelines, off the sidelines as well, a man of deep faith and at times blinding loyalty. But at all times, a man devoted to his team, to his state, and to the pursuit of excellence in football. He's leaving in his absolute prime, winning precisely 60 games in his last five seasons, an unheard of 12 wins per campaign. So congratulations, Coach. Regardless of what the pollsters tell you, you went out on top in your silver anniversary season, leaving nothing but golden memories. It's time for the presentation. Let's take it back to the field and to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? We are chanting T.O. in the crowd for none other than Tom Osborne, who has just coached 
his very last game. But without further ado, let's turn it over to Leslie Pantene, president of the Orange Bowl, to present the Orange Bowl trophy. On behalf of the Orange Bowl committee and all the people in Miami, congratulations to the Nebraska Cornhuskers and especially, especially to Dr. Tom Osborne. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner of the Big 12 Conference, Steve Hatchell, to present the Alliance Trophy. Steve? Thank you, Michelle. On behalf of all of the conferences and teams in the Bowl Alliance, we'd like to present this trophy to you, Tom, for not only an outstanding season, but to a great career. We want to congratulate the University of Tennessee for a wonderful football season and to the Southeast Conference for all of the great things they did in football this year. And in presenting this, Tom, I think the best part is, is that maybe tomorrow there'll be another trophy you can get as well. Congratulations. You want to hand it to somebody, Steve? So, okay. Coach, congratulations. A decisive win, to say the least, and given that and all of the other circumstances, what are your thoughts tonight on the national championship picture? Well, I'm, I'm very proud of our team. I think we did all we could. We, uh, we won 13, and that's all we played. And I'm very proud of these guys. I thought they played a great game. This is the last game for you in 25 years at Nebraska. You've coached your last game. How much of that has sunk in so far? Well, that's a, it's a kind of a bittersweet moment. Uh, very proud of the players. Have great appreciation for our coaching staff. Uh, most of what's happened has been due to their efforts and the players. We have great fans. I want to thank them for being here. So it's a, it's a great night for Nebraska. Coach, congratulations. Thanks, Michelle. I'm joined now by Scott Frost, the quarterback of tonight's winning Nebraska Huskers. What a game. Just describe the feeling at this point and also your thoughts on the national championship picture. Well, it feels great. I'm so proud of this team and I'm just so proud to have had a chance to play for Coach Osborne. And I just want to say this about the national championship, you know, if if, if all the pollsters honestly think, after watching the Rose Bowl and watching the Orange Bowl, that Michigan could beat Nebraska, go ahead and vote Michigan by all means. But let me finish. Let me finish. I don't think. I don't think there's anybody out there that with a clear conscience can say that Nebraska, and especially Tom Osborne, that great man, doesn't deserve a national championship for this. At least a share. Scott Frost has made his case. Nebraska seems to have made theirs. Let's send it back now to Jim Nance. Yes, indeed, Michelle. An urgent plea from Scott Frost. And there was a lot of frost in the end zone tonight here. Three touchdowns by the quarterback, but Amon Green, 206 yards on the ground, leading the way for the Huskers. Back with Phil Fulmer in just a moment. They had to say backstage. Coach, kind of a tale of two halves. The first half, you guys had him in control. What was the difference in the second half? Well, the first half, the two turnovers didn't help things. Uh, obviously, we, we played pretty darn well. It was third quarter, particularly, you know, we've been beaten a few times in the five years that I've been the coach but I don't know we've quite handed our butt had our butts handed to us like we did physically in the third quarter um, Nebraska's a very very fine football team and that's one thing we did not want to have happen is them get momentum gained rushing rushing the football <coughs> excuse me Peyton Manning spent five years with you can you even put into words the emotions you're feeling right now with his last game no I can't uh, Peyton is uh, everything to everybody at Tennessee and uh, he's uh, most of all a great person and uh, we're going to miss his leadership we're obviously going to miss his ability but uh, we're going to miss, miss Peyton Manning the person the most 
Coach, you have a vote in the coaches' poll. Is Nebraska the best team in America? Well, I haven't seen every team in America, but Nebraska is the best team that I've seen, and they'll have my vote. Coach, thanks a lot, and best look in 98. Thank you. Thank you. I doubt there's any other way tonight after that performance by Nebraska against his team. He could vote any other way. We'll be back with more after this. It's been a wonderful experience. I just enjoyed being with you thoroughly. And thanks to all the fans, how great they've been. Great we enjoyed being with you. I think, you know, when you look big picture, the things that are going to happen here in the offseason, is I think that the people that run college football really have to take to heart the lack of attendance at some of the lesser bowl games. They need to make sure that they really consider what's going on in college football and the fan interest level. They've got to make sure that they do things to help conferences like the Big East. They've got to keep the fan interest level high and not let it slip off. All right, Craig, Lou, look forward to being back with you next <laughs> season. This was a college football season that was memorable for many reasons. A farewell to not only Tom Osborne, but the ageless Eddie Robinson, too. The Nebraska miracle at Missouri, Charles Woodson's improbable yet commendable rise to the Heisman, the first defender to claim the award. The bonus for all fans of college football savoring just one more season by Peyton Manning in college and the grace with which he handled defeat. Regrettably, in the end, the treasured American freedom of voting is what will most clearly define this year, though, not only because of the Heisman controversy, but for the teams as well. In a little more than two hours, the voting will be tabulated, and unless it's a split, one team will be undefeated and underappreciated. For no logical reason, this great sport is left to the judges, no different than boxing or figure skating. Until a true playoff is constructed, college football may as well elect its champion the first Tuesday in November as opposed to the first days of January. Congratulations to Michigan and Nebraska. You both answered every challenge. For everybody at CBS Sports, Happy New Year and good night from Miami, Florida. Tonight, Dave hosts a very cool all-Kevin.